Come, 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 come. I suffer from stress, anxiety, and PTSD. And the only thing that has always helped me get out of my funk is when I create or make something. So let's go meet some healers and creatives and make some cool stuff and share some stories. Let's heal by create. We're here today with Courtney Dusenberry. She's a scenic artist and a great person. <laughs> For me personally, it's it's more about like self-compassion and um, you know dealing with feelings of um, uh, anxiety about self-worth and fulfillment, and especially as an artist because you work different jobs, you know, constantly, mm -hmm. and yeah. like different different things are happening and. Um, you're not, I'm not an auteur in the art that I do, you know? I have um, other designers and other collaborator creators that have typically more of a say on a finished product mm -hmm. than I do. Mm -hmm. um, and so that uh, makes my sense of fulfillment sometimes, I can't, I can't rely on my original idea necessarily in a way, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. The anxiety that I feel, um, that I think is a lot genetic in a way, and then also world related, how separate we're all getting, and the way uh, people feel younger people than me. And I'm a millennial, so like <laughs> younger people than me feel more um, intimate with a person online mm -hmm. than they do in person, yeah. which I think is very sad. Yeah. Um, and I think that does cause a lot of anxiety and depression and stress within the like w global community yeah, at large, yeah. um, especially technologically revolutionized places. Yeah. So you think like because the digital world is not really, you, you, you think it's not There's like no, it's not tactile. And yet, if you grew up in that world, then mm -hmm. that is all you know. So why wouldn't that be how you become intimate with someone? I didn't recognize that it was anxiety and stress until I started seeing a therapist in my later 20s and then I was like, oh. So what was the yeah. incident? Can you, do you think well, about I one used incident to, Yeah. was like a light bulb moment for you? Well, when I was a kid, I, um, for some reason, we lived across from a park and in that park there were homeless folks that would sleep in the trees and mm -hmm. stuff and like the playground and stuff at night. Um, they're really nice people. I would talk to them often when I was a kid playing in the park because I like didn't know any better, and I think that was still at a time when like kids could go across the street and play in the park yeah, in the like nineties. Yeah, you know, <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Um, so anyway, so um, at one point, I don't know why what happened. There was some scare about either gun violence in the neighborhood. I don't think it was necessarily in the park, but I don't I don't remember. But something became unsafe about the park. And it was around the same time that the the song Gangster's Paradise mm -hmm. came out and there was that movie and I don't think it has the same title and I meant to look this up but I don't remember. But it's like the Michelle Pfeiffer movie where she's like the 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 principal. Oh, the teacher. Yeah, the she, teacher. She, she goes yeah, yeah, and yeah. Rescues all these kids from the projects, kind of. Thing, right, right, kind of thing. Yeah, and there's like gun violence, clearly gang and gun violence involved in that movie, and obviously in the song, um, and that song, and that movie, and this thing all compiled in me, and like I don't know if it all happened in one night, but I remember I got really worked up, and I got so anxious and nervous that like we were gonna get shot, or like something was gonna happen to us. I worked this all up in my head, and I threw up, and. And then for, I don't know, maybe months after, anytime I would hear that song, because the song was popular, it was like yeah, it part of this movie and like it would play all the time in the radio and I would throw up like every time I heard the song. So every time you hear the song, you would literally just throw up? Yeah, but I mean, it went away after a little while and, and I think it probably went away when my mom or somebody talked to me about why I felt 
so nervous by that song and I mm -hmm. get, told them my like irrational fear that we were gonna mm -hmm. be shot yeah. and I guess I thought like I don't know in my young crazy anxiety yeah, like no control brain I thought yourself in your mind you're going yeah to right yourself nuts. like every time I hear that song yeah. someone's gonna shoot us and it's mm -hmm. like that's it completely irrational and I know that now but like I didn't really think about it until I was talking to a therapist and found out that I had you know anxiety they, you're gonna, um, is this our first time actually you're gonna be making? Yeah, yeah. What, I mean, what is the process called? It's acrylic pouring. Oh, so it's, it's, <laughs> we'll it's try it. We have to mix the pouring medium, which is this business, mm -hmm. with each of the colors. We cannot mix it into the colors once they are poured because the whole thing of why this looks cool and does cool things mm -hmm. is you layer paint in a cup and then pour it out and it, oh. it pools out in a way that's oh, kind of, yeah, it does funky shapes. Shit. What is that one? That's the. This is the medium that the makes it easier to okay. pour. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking about just getting Floterol, which is what I use when I'm doing scenic artistry stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't. But Floterol oh, is sure. something that makes uh, paint like move move better, but it does change the the saturation of the color. If you put too much Floterol into paint, oh. it'll extend the life of a paint says to do five to one so like five, five parts one. of this to one part of that okay. but this acrylic is a little bit more viscous than like artist medium acrylic so I'm gonna try to do three to one and it's a total guess if what I spend most of my time doing is talking about my emotional trauma with mm -hmm. someone um, and talking about the validity of it and all that stuff, to me that's like, well now my emotional trauma is becoming my identity because that's yeah. what I'm choosing to spend yeah. an hour or more every week talking to someone about and giving validity mm -hmm. to. That's the thing when I'm creating, right? And mm -hmm. then like, the process is meditative and it makes yes. me feel yeah, better. Yeah. Well, but it's then, a process too, right? right? Like mm -hmm. I have to repeat it. Yeah, I'm learning. I think what's fun about it is the Pouring it in one direction on the thing and then picking it up and, then and moving the paint, yeah. Because you said you like doing details and... Yeah, the detail stuff, well it just gets me out of my head. If you guys there, I'm never going to get it up yeah. off of wood stuff, so... Yeah, it's the same thing with the paint. Yeah. Dripping its life down. I clearly have had anxiety and depression kind of my whole life. I didn't really get it diagnosed until I was probably 28 and I'm 32 now. Don't get me wrong, I think I have a lot of depression because of my nature, just because of what's been in my yeah. familial line, yeah. but. So, you, but you said the anxiety, so you think that's a generational thing for you? Like, you I th well, I think depression is, a, uh, I, I don't just think that there's Western medicine studies backing this up, that like depression can, um, be genetically passed down. My great grandfather was a very unhappy man yeah. who was still very successful in his life. Yeah. And it's sort of like, why is that? And they probably didn't know or call it depression then, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And there was drinking. And yeah. then his son, my grandfather, definitely had depression. When they gave him the pills, I mean, he was nicer to be around, but he was also, he was, it was weird. It was strange and he didn't like in a way know some boundaries when he was that happy, you know? And it was like, it, it just was weird to be around him. <laughs> he was too happy. Was um, so yeah, <laughs> but that's, you know, neither here nor there. Yeah. But anyway, he, um, it, you know, and then my dad, I think like recognizes that that could be something in him. I don't think that he would take medication for it. And then my brother and I both recognize it somewhat in ourselves and we both tried medication and neither of us liked it. What's in my present, like what I choose to do with every moment of my time and what comes in, into my space, into my being, mm -hmm. um, informs my decisions, um, my thoughts, 